Reading to the Bible in one year, August 28th, 1 Samuel chapter 20, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Lamentations chapter 5, and Psalm 36. Then David fled from Naoth and and Ramah, and came and said before Jonathan, What have I done? What is my iniquity, and what is my sin before your father that he is seeking my life? And he said to him, Far, far from it, you shall not die. Behold, my father does nothing, either great or small, without revealing it in my ear. So why should my father hide this thing from me? It is not so. Yet David swore again, saying, Your father knows well that that I have found favor in your sight. And he has said, Do not let Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly Yahweh lives as and your rather and as Yahweh lives and as your soul lives, there is hardly a step between me and death. And Jonathan said to David, Whatever your soul says, I will do for you. So David said to Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon, and I ought to sit down to eat with the king, but let me go, that I may hide myself in the field until the third evening. If your father misses me at all, then say, David earnestly asked leave of me to return to Bethlehem, uh, his city, because it is the yearly sacrifice there for the whole family. If he says, it is good, well, your servant will have peace. But if he is very angry, know that he has decided on evil. Therefore, show loving kindness to your servant. You have brought your servant into a covenant of Yahweh with you. But if there is iniquity in me, well, put me to death yourself. For why then should you bring me to your father? And Jonathan said, Far be it from you. For if I should indeed come to know that evil has been decided by my father to come upon you, then would I not tell you about it? Then David said to Jonathan, Who will tell me if your father answers you harshly? And Jonathan said to David, Come, and let us go out into the field. So both of them went out to the field. Then Jonathan said to David, Yahweh, the God of Israel, be witness. When I have examined my father about this time tomorrow or the third day, behold, if there is good feeling toward David, then I shall uh, not, rather, then shall I not, then send to you and reveal it in your ear. If it pleases my father to do you harm, May Yahweh do so to Jonathan and more also, if I do not reveal it in your ear and send you away, that you may go in peace, and may Yahweh be with you as he has been with my father. And if I am still alive, will you not show me the loving kindness of Yahweh that I may not die? You shall not cut off your loving kindness from my house forever, not even when Yahweh cuts off every uh, one of the enemies of David from the face of the earth. So Yahweh cut a covenant with the house of David, saying, May Yahweh require it at the hands of David's enemies. And Jonathan made David swear again because of his love for him, because he loved him as he loved his own soul. Then Jonathan said to him, Tomorrow is the new moon, and you will be missed because your seat will be missing. When you have stayed for three days, you shall go down quickly and come to the place where you hid yourself on that eventful day, and you shall remain by uh, the stone easel. And I will shoot three arrows to the side, as though I sent them toward a target. And behold, I will send the young man, saying, Go, find the arrows. And if I specifically say to the young man, Behold, the arrows are on this side of you, get them, well, then come, for there is peace for you and no harm, as Yahweh lives. But if I say to the youth, Behold, the arrows are beyond you, go, for Yahweh has sent you away. As for the the agreement of which you and I have spoken, behold, Yahweh is between you and me forever. So David hid in the field, and when the new moon came, the king sat down to eat food. And the king sat on his seat as usual, the seat by the wall. Then Jonathan rose up, and Abner sat down by Saul's side, but David's place was missing. Nevertheless, Saul did not speak anything that day, for, he said, it is an accident, or he is not clean. Surely he is not clean. Now it happened on the next day, the second day of the new moon, that David's place was still missing. So Saul said to Jonathan his son, Why has the son of Jesse not come to the meal, either yesterday or today? Then Jonathan answered Saul, David earnestly asked leave of me to go to Bethlehem. 
And he said, Please send me on my way, since our family has a sacrifice in the city, and my brother has commanded me to attend. So now, if I have found favor in your sight, please let me uh, get away, that I may see my brothers. For this reason, he has not come to the king's table. Then Saul's anger burned against Jonathan, and he said to him, You son of a perverse, rebellious woman! Do I not know that you are choosing the son of Jesse to your own shame and to the shame of your mother's nakedness? Basically saying that she's chosen this, you know, child of Judah over the family of Bethlehem, not Bethlehem of um, Benjamin. Continuing on, for as long as the son of Jesse lives on the earth, neither you nor your kingdom will be established. So now. Send and bring him to me, for he must surely die. But Jonathan answered Saul, his father, and said, But why? Why should he be put to death? What has he done? Then Saul hurled his spear at him to strike him down. So Jonathan knew that his father had decided to put David to death. Then Jonathan arose from the table in burning anger and did not eat food on the second day of the new moon. For he was grieved over David because his father had dishonored him. Now, it happened in, excuse me, in the morning that Jonathan went out to the field for the appointment with David, and a very young man was with him. And he said to his young man, run and find the arrows which I am about to shoot. And as the young man was running, he shot an arrow past him. When the young man reached the place of the arrow which Jonathan had shot, Jonathan called after the lad and said, is not the arrow beyond you? And Jonathan called after the young man, hurry, be quick, do not stay. And Jonathan's uh, young man gathered up the arrow and came to his master. But the young man did not know of anything. Only Jonathan and David knew about the matter. Then Jonathan gave his weapons to his young man and said to him, Go, bring them to the city. When the young man was gone, David arose from the south side and fell on his face to the ground and bowed three times. And they kissed each other and wept together. But David wept more. And Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, inasmuch as we have sworn to each other in the name of Yahweh, saying, Yahweh will be between me and you, between my seed and your seed forever. Then he rose and departed, while Jonathan went into the city. Let's move on now to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Paul continues. And when I came to you, brothers, I did not come with superiority of word or of wisdom, proclaiming to you the witness of God. For I determined to know nothing among you except Christ and him crucified. When I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling, in my word, my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power so that your faith would not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Yet we do not speak wisdom among those who are mature. Uh, 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 Wisdom, however, not of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are being abolished. But we speak in God's wisdom, in a mystery. The wisdom which has been hidden which God predestined before the ages to our glory, which none of the rulers of this age has understood. For if they had understood it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But just as it is written, things which eye has not seen and ear has not heard, and which have not um, entered the heart of man and all that God has prepared for those who love him, But to us, God has revealed them through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. For who among men knows the depths of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, the depths of God no one knows except the Spirit of God. Now, we have received, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God so that we may know the depths graciously given to us by God, of which depths we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual depths with spiritual words. 
But a natural man does not accept the depths of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them, because they are spiritually discerned, or spiritually examined. But he who is spiritual, meaning he who has the Spirit within him, examines all things, yet he himself is examined by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he will direct him? But we, we have the mind of Christ. Now, Lamentations chapter 5. Remember, O Yahweh, what has happened to us. Look and see our reproach. Our inheritance has been turned over to strangers, our houses to foreigners. We have become orphans without a father. Our mothers are like widows. We drink our water by means of silver. Our wood comes to us at a price. Our pursuers are at our necks. We are worn out. There is no rest for us. We have given over our hands to Egypt and to Syria to get enough bread. Our fathers sinned. They are no more. It is we who have borne their iniquities. Slaves rule over us. There is no one to tear us away from their hand. We get our bread at the risk of our lives because of the sword in the wilderness. Our skin has become as hot as an oven because of the burning heat of famine. They violated the women in Zion, the virgins in the cities of Judah. Princes were hung by their hands. Elders were not respected. Young men lifted up the stone at the grinding mill, and youths stumbled down under loads of wood. Elders have ceased from being at the gate, young men from their music. The joy of our hearts has ceased. Our dancing has been turned into mourning. The crown has fallen from our head. Woe to us, for we have sinned. Because of, because of this, our heart is faint. Because of these things, our eyes are dim. Because of Mount Zion, which lies desolate, foxes walk about in it. You, O Yahweh, sit enthroned forever. Your throne is from generation to generation. Why do you forget us forever? Why do you forsake us so long? Cause us to return to you, O Yahweh, that we may be returned Renew our days as of old. Even if you have utterly rejected us and are exceedingly angry with us. Now Psalm 36. Transgression declares to the ungodly within his heart. There is no Dread of God before his eyes. For it flatters him in his eyes, for no one, rather for one to discover his iniquity and hate it. The words of his mouth are wickedness and deceit. He has ceased to consider to do good. He devises wickedness upon his bed. He sets himself on a path that is not good. He does not despise evil. Your loving kindness, O Yahweh, is in the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Your righteousness is like the mountains of God. Your judgments are like a great deep. O Yahweh, you save man and beast. How precious is your loving kindness, O God. And the sons of men take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They are satisfied from the richness of of your house and you give them to drink of the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your righteousness to the upright in heart. Let not the foot of pride come upon me, and let not the hand of the the ungodly drive me away. There the workers of wickedness have fallen. They have been thrust down and cannot rise. That's it for today. That is all of the reading and also all of the notes. God willing, we'll be back tomorrow. Behold.
the word of the Lord.